what do you think it's going to take for us as a society to realize that basically every time you are kind of going through the drive through and I am admittedly biased on this, but every time you are going through the drive through you are literally getting your fix. And then when we think about that, it kind of takes the whole idea that a cheat day is even a healthy thing and it throws that out the window. That's such a foreign concept for so many of us. How are we going to screw our heads on straight here, Doc? You are 100 percent correct in the way you're seeing this, because, you know, you might remember that one of my best selling million copy selling books was called Eat to Live, written 2004. And um, I had people follow a very strict diet for six weeks, but then I gave them authorization or permission to be to cheat and to um, and to do it 90 percent rule to do this 90 percent correct and just stay 10, per, you know, but over the years and decades since then. So many people have failed or do fail because of the continual cheating or, or going, you know, having things that aren't healthy. And when you have that addictive, that history of that addictive relationship with food, you keep lighting the fire under your desires and it prevents you from resolving your, des your need for those particular addictive substances. And so over the years, I've gotten more strict, not less strict. I like you, I'm saying to people, you know, my experience of the last 30 years is that the people who've lost 50 pounds, lost 100 pounds, lost 150 pounds, and kept it off the rest of their life, if you look at the success and what were the factors that led to their success, these were people who, when they jumped in, didn't keep cheating and going back and forth. They stayed on the program strictly, and they felt so good, and, they got, and the results they received were so incredibly positive that they stayed with it long term and they don't like the way they feel and they like the way they think and they like the way they they like the new person they've become enough to continue with this program that doesn't mean they didn't have a difficult time the first six months that doesn't mean they didn't feel worse when they first started out and went gone through withdrawal from and detoxification from and feeling miserable both physically and emotionally the first month that they've done that i've seen you know as you are aware i have a retreat in san diego where people come and stay here for one, two, or three months to get to lose weight and get well from food addiction. And they could be irritable the first few weeks. They could be upset and they're giving up these this love affair they had with these substances and they have to give them up and they're not getting them. And they're, you could see how it ignites the brain and it's very stressful for them making this decision to give up something that they're so, that's so, they're so intimate with in their life and they think their life and their happiness is so dependent on. And once they're, but the longer they're away from this substance, that's why, you know, that's why people go away to these retreats or health places for a week or two or three even. And the chance of recidivism is so high because like with cocaine and rehab, it takes months to get rid of, to, and that you have to be away from these substances for a longer period of time for the brain to get well and to no longer to be so overly attracted to these things. And I'm saying exactly what you're saying that the people that, still kind of cheap. It's like the alcoholic thinking they can go to the bar on the weekend and have alcohol. It makes it more difficult for them, not easier for them. The more they think, keep their foot in that other world and they don't want to fully give it up, the more it keeps the light written on the, the fire burning on their desire for those substances instead of letting it dim out and just and the ashes just go away. And their taste but muscle improves and they lose the desire from foods if they can stay away from them long enough. But they also we, you know, we're also talking about here that they have to learn a lot about a different way of seeing the world. For sure. They have to change their psychology to be to sustain for sustained wellness. It's not all about food here. It's about the food. It's about the biology and the science. And it's also about having robust emotional health and what it takes to change your outlook on the world to be able to free yourself of addiction, especially food addiction, because food addiction is is the more difficult addiction to conquer, more so even harder than alcohol addiction and drug addiction. The re there's a lot of reasons for that, but the main reason is, is you get negative peer pressure and you can receive a lot of criticism, um, ridicule and peer from your community for live, trying to live healthfully because everybody else is an addict trying to convince you to join them in their addictive, unhealthy behaviors. Whereas with alcohol or cigarettes, people are supporting you and applauding you for coming off your alcohol or your cigarettes or your drugs. But with food addiction, they're criticizing you for coming off, the, for no longer eating healthy and imbibing in unhealthy and self-destructive substances with, with them. 
you know, so it makes it much more difficult. And that's why you need such much robust emotional health.